Hi, this is Frid from The Joy of Syntax. I'm English in color. Today, I want to present to you two different transcription systems. By now, you have probably figured out that I'm very fond of transcription systems and that I think they're very helpful for learners of English. And I am also extremely fond of dictionaries. I love reading dictionaries. And I think it is so fantastic that there are so many online dictionaries that we can use for free and that, they, and that these dictionaries offer help with pronunciation. Uh, one of the dictionaries that I really recommend to learners is the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. I also love uh, Webster's Advanced Learners Dictionary and Webster's Unabridged, to which I have a subscription, and Webster's Collegiate, which is also available online for free. Um, so please use all these free resources. And in order to encourage you to use them more, I'm going to help you with the IPA and Webster's transcription system today by juxtaposing the two. Uh, for those of you who haven't done that yet, I recommend looking at my freebie. I offer actually two pronunciation freebies, an inventory of sounds and an introduction to the sounds of English. Um, and today I'm going to juxtapose the system that I use there, which is used by Oxford, and Webster's very own transcription system. And as always, I have prepared a PowerPoint and I'm going to share my screen now. And let's get started. My computer is getting slow. <laughs> American pronunciation according to Oxford's IPA and Merriam-Webster's transcription system. And let me add, I am going to really juxtapose just the transcription systems. I'm not going to offer um, a variety of different pronunciation versions um, for the same word. You know, some words or many words, in fact, have more than um, one pronunciation option. If you take the word either, for instance, it can be pronounced either or either in standard American English. Um, so I'm not going to go into differences, into those kinds of differences. I'm not going to juxtapose British and American English. I'll save that for another day. But I'm simply going to use the different or present to you the different transcription systems. Here we go. Ooh, technology. It is sometimes a challenge. Okay, let's start with vowels. And I always like to start with the front vowels and I'll read them to you and then I'll point out some interesting things. Green, pink, red, and black. And for those of you who are German, make sure that you pronounce the difference between the sound in red and this, the vowel sound in black where you have to open up your mouth a little bit more. It's the crocodile sound. Okay, check this out. Green, so there are two different symbols used to represent this high, long front vowel. Pink, it looks almost the same, but see, um, this letter I is used to represent the pink sound, um, the E sound, the short, high front vowel. Um, and this symbol is also used in the IPA in um, words like happy. When you compare the word, the sound in pink and sit and pit with the E sound that occurs in happy, you will notice that because the E is in an open syllable in happy and at the end of a word, it is a little bit longer. And in order to suggest the difference on paper or um, on screen, I, the IPA uses this symbol then as the this short vowel in an open syllable and or at the end of a word. Um, and the and and Webster doesn't distinguish between these two, so that's very important. Um, otherwise, um, nothing much to say except that the IPA uses the ash uh, to represent the open front vowel and Webster just uses a regular letter A. Central vowels, purple, burgundy, rust. Now please don't get confused. Burgundy also has the same sound as in purple. So the, the first syllable 
contains the same sound as in, as does the color purple. But the second syllable contains an unstressed sound. It's this murmuring sound that has its own name and it's called a schwa. The schwa is one of the unstressed um, vowels and we have it in German and British English has it and American English has it. It's this murmuring mumble sound. Uh. Now, isn't it interesting that Webster uses this schwa to represent the long stressed central vowel er that occurs in purple bird and girl, as well as for this unstressed sound and for this more open central um, vowel that occurs in rust and love and above and was. Now, why do they use the same symbol? Well, obviously they feel that there is no difference in kind between these three sounds, er, er, ah. And granted, the color rust, um, which has the same vowel sound as the um, word love, is sometimes um, pronounced with a more centralized sound. So instead of love, we often hear love in American English. Um, but still, it is a little bit of, um, the sound is a little bit more open and it's important to see that according to Webster, there is no real difference in kind. And according to the IPA as presented by Oxford, there is a difference in kind. So that is interesting. Um, now there's also dif the difference, um, you know, when you see this schwa, so you don't know whether it's stressed or unstressed, so you need to pay attention to whether there's a stress mark in front of the syllable or not. The stress mark in front of a syllable at, um, at the top always indicates primary stress. And then you know that when the schwa is followed by an R, it is a little bit more pronounced, er, um, writer, purple is more pronounced than in burgundy or again so writer again so the quality of the sound is quite different because of the presence or absence of the post vocalic r and then when and in rust ah ah uh. now i feel that there is a difference and that they would be wise to indicate that but obviously they think the difference is not noteworthy so we'll note it Back vowels. I'll read them and then I'll talk a little bit. Blue, soot, gold, orange, mauve, aqua. I want to point out um, three things. Number one, notice that Webster uses basically the same symbol, the same, and, and it's basically the letter U. Um, which I find a bit of a problem because the the letter this letter can also represent the sound as in hot you know um, and then they have they suggest that this one is longer by putting two dots on top and now it looks like a German umlaut but it isn't an umlaut and here's just one dot but this suggests that these are basically the same sounds only that this one is longer, but that is not true. It's not true for American English. It's definitely not true for British English. When you compare the word um, food and foot, food, foot, blue, soot, blue, soot, you see that there is a little bit more lip rounding for blue. It's not only longer, it's also wavier <clears throat> and it has a little bit more lip rounding. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. So I actually think um, it's better to use a different symbol. I'm sorry, I'm can't, becoming a little bit hoarse. <clears throat> Let me take a drink of water. Actually, it's green tea. So blue soot. The IPA suggests a different and difference in kind the um, Webster transcription system suggests a difference in length only. Interesting. Now, gold, 
Um, it's the same, supposed to be the same sound. Now, some people consider this sound to be a diphthong and some consider it a dynamic monophthong. When you look at the transcription system, the transcription system that uh, Oxford uses, the IPA, suggests the, um, the diphthong attitude and, the tr and Webster's transcription system suggests a monophthong attitude. Interesting. Now, why it's definitely a dynamic sound. Oh, we have movement in it. Um, it's not, it's, you know, is it really, can we see that there are two sounds that blend into one? Or is it more one sound that is dynamic? That's the question when you want to um, fight about whether it's a diphthong or a monophthong. I suggest we don't fight. I suggest we just note the difference between the two transcription systems and make sure that we pronounce it dynamically. And I would also like to add, of course, there are so many different accents and dialects um, in the English speaking world, and they're all beautiful. I am teaching standard American and standard British English as suggested by those standardized dictionaries. And I will talk about the challenges of standardization in another video. That's a long story. Okay, now orange. In British English, we say orange, and then the sound is quite different from mauve or aqua. But in American English, we actually don't need the color orange as a separate sound um, representer um, because it's either pronounced orange, like aqua, sort of like aqua, or orange, like mauve. But I kept the word in here because it is in the inventory of sounds. Okay, just check out. Um, so we have these two symbols that occur again in mauve and aqua. So blue, so gold, orange, mauve, aqua. These are the three sounds that people generally agree are diphthongs, although Webster's transcription system suggests that it is, again, this, the first one is a dynamic vowel, white, brown, oyster but they also seem to agree that brown, the ow and the oi are diphthongs. Um, I don't wanna fight over that. I actually don't care whether we say these are diphthongs or dynamic vowels. Um, I just want you to know these transcription systems and I want you to be able to help yourself when you count, encounter a new word. Okay, let's move on to consonants. Plosives are easy. The same symbol is used in British, American, and German. And by both the IPA and Webster's transcription system. Penguin, bear, tiger, dolphin, kangaroo, gorilla. The differences here only pertain to differences in vowel representation. Kangaroo. Fricatives. Most of them are the same. Frog, vole, seal, zebra, beige, and hippo are the same. The differences with regard to the dental fricatives, the, the IPA uses actually two symbols that are derived from runes. This is the thorn and this is the F, and the thorn represents the voiceless dental fricative as in thunder and thrush and the f represents the voiced dental fricative as in feather and the and though. Webster simply uses the th and underlines the th when it's voiced. And then for sheep we have um, the sh to represent the, the palatal fricative and we have a special symbol in the IPA. Africans. Okay, sheep. Uh, if you add a sh, if you add a, a t to the sh sound, ch, then you have the choo choo sound. Compare this again. So we have sheep with sh for Webster's and ch for um, the chimpanzee sound in Webster's. The differences um, with regard to other phenomena. So Webster says that 
the second vowel can also be a schwa, doesn't have to be an ash, and that the second syllable can also carry main stress. And it would sound, the different sounds like this. Chimpanzee, chimpanzee, chimpanzee. Oxford says there's only one way to pronounce the word chimpanzee, um, chimpanzee, sorry. But I wanted to focus on the African sounds here. Giraffe, giraffe, giraffe. Now check this out. Webster uses the letter J to represent the J, the voiced palatal affricate, alveopalatal affricate, J. And I actually think that's a good choice between the letter J is very, very often pronounced J. Unfortunately, we'll see in a minute that the letter J is also used as a symbol by the IPA. And I think that's very unfortunate. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, um, the following sounds are not considered phonemes by linguists because they say, well, those are simply combinations of phonemes and we don't need to list them separately. I listed them here because it's, uh, they are challenging sounds for Germans, the difference between cats and woods, tss, dz, and fox and gz, dogs. And so I think it's good to practice those. Umph, cat, woods, fox, dogs. Okay, here we have liquids. Um, again, there is no difference in representation of the these important sounds, w and r. This is the symbol representing the dark L. Remember that British English has a light and a dark L. The light L tends to be used at the beginning of words like lion and light, and Americans tend to always use the dark L, lion, light. Um, Germans need to learn the dark L. I mean, some German dialects have a dark L, but standard high German doesn't, so that's the challenge. But um, usually, actually, the, um, the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary doesn't present this diacritic sign. They usually use this symbol to present both the dark and the light L. And Webster's doesn't indicate a difference. And the R is always this R in both dictionaries. Glides. Wombat, they both use the letter W to represent the bilabial glide. Wow, the cool wow sound. And here we have this problem that the letter J is used as a symbol by the IPA to represent the glide, the ye, this palatal glide. And I think that Webster's choice is so much better because the letter Y very, very often is pronounced ye, is this glide in you and yes and yak. So why people would come up with the idea of using the letter J to represent the yes sound, I don't know, beats me. Nasals, they're easy, same presentation, same symbol, I mean, um, marmot, numbat, and orangutan, orangutan. Now, some people also say orangutan. Actually, there are many different spellings and pronunciations of this word, but we'll just stick with orangutan. And um, the differences between these words, uh, the, the transcriptions of these words, only refers to the vowel sounds so we don't have to worry about that and the and the glide here so check it out the m and the n is totally easy and the velar nasal just gets this little tail okay here is a summary of a few challenges um i pointed out that these the you know the sound as in pink uh, we looked at pink and uh, it occurs again here. Um, here, it's a pink sound and Webster's uses this letter, which is used as a symbol by the, um, by the IPA or in the IPA for the P 
think sound in an open syllable. There's the difference here between these two syllable uh, symbols. Lure, start, the Webster sign looks like a German umlaut, and then we have the central <coughs> vowels presentation representations where American English, um, no, where Webster's transcription system suggests that these are not three different sounds, but that they are quite similar. Actually. So actually they suggest that the sound itself is the same and that it is just colored by its phonetic environment. And IP, the IPA suggests that the sounds themselves are also different. So that's an interesting difference. Okay, I hope this helped you and I hope you enjoyed this. And um, please visit me um, on my websites and on Facebook and Instagram and check out the next video that I'll produce tomorrow or maybe even tonight. Have a nice day. Okay, let me stop sharing. Bye-bye.